Praise the name of Jesus, our wonderful saviour and friend. Today in the midweek teach we're going to be looking in the writings of Matthew. Have a look there. It's amazing uh, what we find when we look. Amazing what the Lord enables us to find and to see. And to do and to understand. So let's go to Matthew chapter 5 and we'll start reading in verse 13. You are the salt of the earth, but if the salt loses its flavour, how shall it be seasoned? It is then good for nothing but to be thrown out and trampled underfoot by men. You are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden. Nor do they light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a lampstand. And it gives light to all who are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Jesus speaking, red writing, express words of Jesus. See your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Yes, Jesus has a Father, our Father, who art in heaven. Jesus' Father is our Father. Yes, he has a Father. Just get that out of the road. Um, Verse 13, you are the salt of the earth. But if the salt loses its flavour, how shall it be seasoned? It is then good for nothing but to be thrown out and trampled underfoot by men. Well, the only reason why we're the salt of the earth is because of the Christ, the Word in us. The only reason why we're um, able to bring preservation Uh, the only reason why we're able to bring some flavour, some natural flavour into the lives of people is uh, because of the word in us. Now, if we lose touch, with the word, Jesus. We lose touch. We're going to lose that flavour, aren't we? We're not going to be the preservatives we should be. Salt is a, a, a preserver and preserves keeps um, the thing I want to look at is uh, so it uh, brings out the flavor the natural flavor in uh, meat red meat fish chicken and uh, what flavour uh, are you? That's the, that's the title of the message today. What flavour are you? 
when the word is spoken to you, when we read the word, what what's it bring out? What does it reveal? Does it um, reveal that you're a sweet person? Eh? I find the Word of God absolutely and totally amazing. Eh? Absolutely and totally amazing. And uh, it is a very much a, a maze, a, a M A Z E, uh, to people who don't have the spirit. He's just wandering around. No? Just wandering around, don't know where you're going. But because we have the Spirit of God, the very Spirit of the Word, Holy Spirit, we looked at that last Sunday. When we have the Spirit, we're able to understand, don't we? So, very simple and very um, amazing. So when the word is spoken, does it, does it uh, reveal a sweet character in you? Hey? That, that's very nice, isn't it? You know, when I speak the word of the Lord on the streets and one-on-one -on -one to people, I've seen that, you know. I've seen a real sweetness come out of people, out of their character, see. I am amazed at the word because it... it um, it, that very thing, it's so revealing without having to go through a lot of messing around to find out who's who in the zoo. You know, it's just speaking that word and all sorts of things are brought to the surface. What, what flavour are you? Hey, what's the natural flavour? What's the the natural characteristics coming out of you? Is it anger? I've seen that in many people when I speak the words, they get very angry. Well, the Lord, He shows that to us, doesn't He? That we have to deal with that. And if it's we're, we're sweet people, he shows us that we can use that to Christ's advantage. Anger has to be dealt with. This all comes under Hebrews, doesn't it? Powerful writing, the book of Hebrews, Hebrews 4 and the verses 11, oh sorry, 4.12, for the word of God is living and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing and the division 
of soul and spirit, joints and marrow gel, and is discerner, is, is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Right? See, we don't have to be the discerner. We don't have to be much at all, really, do we? It's the word that's the discerner. Right? It's the word that's the discerner, not us. And um, when we have that gift of discernment, as the scriptures talk, Paul the Corinthians in the gifts, uh, when we have that gift of discernment, we're able to, um, because the word is the discerner, we're able to see more in the word. We're able to um, use use the word that little bit better than the average man. Just you know, a little bit yogi bearish, smarter than the average bear. <laughs> you could say that. Um, Boo Boo and Yogi Bear, smarter than the average bear. So when we have that gift of the sermon, we're gifted there, right? It's not ours again, is it? It's a gift. We're able to see that a little bit more. And um, you might, you know, when the word is spoken, You might um, witness pride there. Hey? You'd see that pride come out. You might see, you know, the response to that person. Well, the angry person would say, go away. Go away. Um, the proud person would say, I don't need that. That would, would be what the salt is bringing out of, the, of that person. Bringing out that natural flavour. It's an endemic. Hey? It, it's an endemic. A natural flavour. Not a spiritual, but a natural but if the person was born again and you speak the word, it might be too. It might, you might see that uh, sweetness there. But whatever way we go, uh, the word's gonna sh uh, show your flavor. Because that's what it's designed to do. It's designed to draw out whether it be good or bad. Hey? I don't need that. I don't need that word. I run into people like that over the weekend. On our bike run, on the roll to dice, you know, people that were just sitting in the pub would, I wouldn't know from Barney Rubble. And uh, I decided to uh, get beside them and, and endeavour to present the Christ. But they wouldn't want a bar of it, some of them, you know. They didn't want to know about it and I had opportunity to minister to people that I would never minister to in a lifetime. Because I went to a place that I didn't even knew it, know of. And uh, I tell you what, I've seen some flavours. <laughs> um, 
he might draw out, uh, you might have a, a run across a person that says, oh, you know, that's a liar. And you might see, oh, the word has shown me that one's a liar. Because they say, it, what you're saying about this Jesus is not true. So that, that makes them a liar. Hey? I'm, what I'm exalting here today is the word. I'm exalting the power of the salt. Right? The power of the salt. You are the salt of the earth. It's not because of us. It's not because of anything of us. It's because of the word. That we, we become of use. Of any use, really. Of any heavenly use. But if we lose that flavour... We, we lose touch with the word, Jesus. How shall it be seasoned? Right? Becomes good for nothing. It was like Judas, wasn't it? Judas lost touch. He lost his flavour. And... Uh, how could it be seasoned again? He just went out and hung himself. It is then good for nothing but to be thrown out and trampled underfoot by men. Right? He come back with the money. And they said, the religious mob said, we don't want nothing to do with it. That's, you know, that's bad money. So to speak, he went out killed himself. I believe it's uh, salt. And that's what the word makes us. And that's what the word Does through us adds flavour to not just to our lives but to everyone else's wherever we may go. It might bring out um, the gratitude thing, you know. It might when you minister to someone and you're speaking the word to them. And I see this that people are so grateful to hear what I said. What I had to say was what Jesus said. I see that amazing power manifest. And I'm just, look, I tell you, you know what it's like when you have a good day? You know, like, everyone wants to have a good day. You know, it's a bit of a saying, really, and have a nice day. Um, Enjoy the day. Everyone wants that. Well, when you, you know, we go out and we speak the word and give the word to someone, it, whether it's verbally or in uh, track, tracked form, format, it's, um, you know, you see the responses. You see the responses on comments on YouTube. When the salt's dished up, right? when the word is given, and you've got people returning their, their um, 10 cents worth, and they make a comment, oh, you're this and you're that, and blah, 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 or <coughs> nice. Oh, that was just so beneficial. Oh, that was just so beautiful. When you see that, you know it's not you. You, you know it's, it's the word working. Right? It's the power working. The power that worketh in us. Mightily. As Paul said. 
to the Colossian. Right? If we can just quickly go over that. If we can just quickly go there to Colossians. And Colossians um, chapter 1, in it? And the verses 28. Him we preach, warning every man, teaching every man in all wisdom, that we may present every man perfect in Christ Jesus. To this end I also labor, striving according to his working, which works in me mightily. And Paul always, he was one to roll over. He rolled everything on to, to Jesus. And he give all the glory to Jesus. Striving according to his working, which works in me mightily. He was teaching and warning by the power of God. So, absolutely amazing. Um, you get people that are very submissive, you know, when the word is spoken. Um, and they, you know, they're like, uh, they're like Saul of Tarsus on the Damascus Road, very submissive. And they heard the word. He heard Jesus. Who are you, Jesus? Oh, I am Jesus. Who are you, Lord? And you're persecuting me. Wow. And straight away, you know, um, he didn't get angry at the Lord. He wasn't proud. He didn't. He didn't try to uh, say that he was a liar. Right? He's very submissive. What do you want me to do? So that's when he heard that truth. Straight away he submitted. There's no saying what the Lord can do. With a submissive heart, a submissive person. That's the power of the soul, too. What flavour are you? You are the salt. I mean, the Lord's made his people so useful, beneficial. He's made us so great. Like he became nothing that we could be great. It's like that uh, little song I wrote. Uh, it goes, gather around people, whoever you are, and I'll tell you a story about a man. He died for you and he died for me. And his blood ran down a hill and there is salvation in no other name but the name of Jesus the Saviour well they whipped him and they whipped him and they spat in his face and he became nothing that you could be great see he became nothing so we could be sold he became nothing that we could be light he became nothing that we could be great. And greater love has never been seen that he laid down his life for his friend. And if you give his commandment, you'll be his friend. For the times, they are ending. Home? 
and then he says, a new, then it says, the song says, a new commandment I give unto you, that you love one another as I have loved you. And if you do, can do this, they'll know you are mine. And all the lost sheep will come home. And the latter now will then be first. For the times they are ending. Gather around people, whoever you are, and I'll tell you a story about a man. Well, he died for you and he died for me. And his blood ran down a hill. And there is salvation in no other name but the name of Jesus. The Saviour. Well, they whipped him and they whipped him and they spat in his face. And he became nothing that you could be great. Oh, great love has never been seen. But he laid down his life for his friend. And if you keep his commandments, you'll be his friend for the times. They are ending. New commandment I give unto you, that you love one another as I have loved you. And if you can do this, they will know you are mine, and all the last sheep will come home. And the latter now will then be first. For the times, they are ending. When I put those words together, that melody of um, Bob Dylan's song, The Times They Are Changing, I sort of picked that up, you know? That's not my original, that melody. But the words are, not the melody, I sort of got that as I was thinking on that song of Dylan. That, uh, oh, Jesus, he, he, he is um, so <coughs> wonderful, isn't he? He became nothing that we could be great. That, that's, that's what the salt done. That's what the word does. The word, the word of the Lord, makes us something. Makes us someone. The word of God gives us greatness as we humble ourselves under the mighty hand of God. He exalts us in due season. Hey. Right? And he became nothing that we could be great. <laughs> hey? For the times they are ending, and that they are, dear listeners. You might, um, as the word is spoken, it might bring out uh, um, a bitterness. Hey? There might be bitterness there. Ah, oh, rubbish, what a load of rubbish. And I found that recently with a person, elderly man. Right? And he is very bitter. I mean, I was actually, surprisingly, I was drinking a lemon lime and bitters. <laughs> uh, hey? I was standing there in, in the old pub room, the Gem Hotel. And uh, drinking a lemon, lime and bitters. It wasn't a good one either. I was a bit disappointed with that drink. And here he is, uh, telling this old geezer about the lot. He's bitter as. All better than my lemon, lime bitters he was. And he actually... He came from England too, and he was 
as he was telling me unofficially, a cockney. And they cut everything short, you know. If, if you're born in the region of Bow Bells, you're considered a cockney, you are. And he going on there like a pork chop. Oh, I just sort of tread lightly. Lightly, get it? Salt and light. And uh, I could see there, nah, this one's sovereign move. I'll just, I'll tie it up there and move on. Then they gave the yell, you know, stands up. We're moving out in five minutes. I thought, well, I'll clock off here and move on. <laughs> but uh, I found out what flavour he was. Right? And it wasn't strawberry. It, it was it was bitter. And you think he'd know better, at it, you know? Nothing sadder than seeing elderly people. I mean, I'm, like I said before, I'm a young fellow, I'm only 65. But you know, you see them 80 and 90 and they're, they're just so far gone, you know. They're, it's as if they've learnt nothing in, in all those years. They're angry, they're bitter, they're, they're um, rejecting the Lord, despising the Lord. That's the miracle, isn't it, of the Word? Miracle of the word of the Lord, discerning the thoughts and the intents of the heart. And we're going to go out today. We're going to go out this week. The brothers and sisters in the Lord worldwide. They're going to dish up the the word. We're going to see what flavors are out there. Okay. And when you get a piece of red meat or fish or chicken, when you have a go at that, have, have some some of that to eat and without salt, oh dear. Hey? Talk about plain Jane. Um, it just doesn't hit the spot, does it? But you hit it with a bit of salt. Hey? Nice tea bone with a sprinkle of sea salt. Oh. Hey? Stop it. Nice piece of um, barra or whiting with it. Down at the seaside there, give it a sprinkle of a bit of, you know, a bit of salt there on the chips and the fish. Oh, I love to go down to the seaside. <laughs> Hey? They're the originators, aren't they? The pommies. Aren't they the ones... They get the tick for the fish and chips. Fish and chips and pork pies, isn't it? What flavour are you? Even as a... A child of God or a disciple, even a minister. What flavour are you? When the word is spoken... You jumping up and down, or <laughs> hey? I seen some people joyed out. You know, they're just like blown out of their socks. They're jumping up and down, and they say to you things like, oh, "I like the way you talk." Where do you get that stuff from? Sort of thing. You know, where did you get it? <laughs> Remember that there used to be an ad, an ad on the. On the tally, it says, where did you get it? Where did you get it? And then they talk about some shop, you know, like a five and dime shop. I got it at Crazy Clark's or something, I don't know. Big John's, Big Bill. Where'd you get that? I like the way you talk. And then you have to... Gently correct them and say, actually, you're liking the word of the Lord. You're, you're, um, you're rejoicing in the, 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 uh, the salt. You're, 
and a candidate for glory. And they're just over the, the moon, you know. They're all excited, joyed out. I tell you, that's a, a blessing to come across people like that that get all joyed up at the word. And then you give them a brochure on top of it. Now, oh, look, I'm going to read that when I get home. I said, yeah, get, get the billy out, have a cover, and have a good old read. I said, look, you're going to do one of two things. You're either going to bin it, you're going to throw it in the bin, or you're going to put it on the mantelpiece. <laughs> There's no middle ground, hey? It's on the mantelpiece or in the bin. It's what the Lord says anyway. It's light or dark, it's yes or no. Hey? It's you or him. It's the devil or Jesus. Hell or heaven. Hey? We can't afford... Uh, to lose the flavour. You don't want to lose that touch. You know, we've got to stay in touch with the lamb, the lamb light. Huh? Our lamb, loving lamb light, Lord. Jesus. I think this has got a, <coughs> a small relationship to the um, expelling of once saved, always saved too. Hey? If you're the salt and you, and you lose your flavour, you're finished, don't you? Hey? Makes it clear, believers are salt and light. So you sort of become like uh, Mrs Lot, don't you? She was um, made use of in another way. But Lot chose to be used of God. But it was finished for her, it was curtains. You know, you might be a person that um, uh, might be hateful, you know, you hear the word I'm gonna I've had plenty of these, I'm gonna bash you, you know, <laughs> on the street. You'll hear when I get back I'm gonna bash you, you know. And so um the beauty of the word it it's doing the work. It's um He's working, working in us mightily as well as doing a work in others and, and magnifying what needs to be attended to. Like you get a mechanic or electrician on and they've got certain instruments that you put on the, on the car or the electrical appliance, little do relaxes. They connect it up and, oh, look, the meter's reading this and the meter's reading that. You, you need a new alternator or you need a new generator or the battery's gone, all those sorts of things. Eh? Well, you know, that's all the word is really, isn't it? You know, it, it's a salty meter reader. <laughs> hey. It's a salty meter reader. And only the salty will be saved. I've done a message on that going back in a long time ago. Only the salty will be saved. And there's nothing worse than eating unsalted nuts. <laughs> you ever eaten unsalted peanuts? Oh, dear me. It's like eating cardboard. Eh? Terrible. 
Can you imagine uh, eating uh, crisps, Smith's crisps, without salt, if they didn't have any salt? They'd be like eating material. <laughs> I mean, that's why you, you, you eat, you open a pack of the Smith's crisps, because you're getting a good dousing of salt, home. Hey? So what flavour are you when the word's spoken to you and you're given the hard truths? What's going to come out? Is there uh, is there going to be a um, that love come out of you? And you're going to say to the preacher, "Good work, well done, old chap." Bravo. Rather, I'd rather like that uh, that speech of yours. Are you going to uh, encourage the preacher to be loving? That's a beautiful thing. When a preacher is encouraged yeah preach it you know we want to hear more boy oh boy I think it was John wasn't it we go over to let's go over to one John here and uh, it's a beautiful uh Beautiful read this in Third John. And there's only one chapter there, so there's only thirteen verses or oh, fourteen I should say. Third letter of John and uh we'll start at the beginning. writing to Gaius, the elder, to the beloved Gaius, whom I love in truth. So he's not hypocritical. He truly does love him. And because of the truth, and in the truth, and truthfully, it's all truth, 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 isn't it? I love in, in the Christ. See, there wouldn't be that. Wouldn't be that love without the truth, without the salt. In verse 2, Beloved, I pray that you may prosper in all things and be in health, just as your soul prospered, your mind, will, and emotions. Eh? Won't even to prosper in everything, ladies' hand to. The prosperity mob get onto that and they ride that thing into the ground, you know, as if it's all money, money, money. Must be funny. It's a rich man's well. They ride that thing till it's spineless, you know. <laughs> anyway, verse 3, Third John 3. For I rejoiced greatly when brethren came and testified of the truth. Here we go again. That is in you, just as you walk in the truth. There it is again. It's all salt so far. I have no greater joy than to hear that my children are salty. Hey? They walk in the truth. No greater joy. He couldn't find any greater joy. See how much he loved the people? Well, look, I, I've got to say, when I hear brethren walking in the truth, I hear or I know or see, I'm just, I'm joyed out. Totally joy-boned. <laughs> hey? 
Right? Totally joy bound of an ass. <coughs> I'm totally joyed out. Absolutely love it. No greater joy is there for a minister. And it's the exact opposite. When a minister sees, they don't even have to be his sheep, sees people walking in lies or error. Oh, it's heartbreaking. Terrible, terrible thing. Eh? What flavour are you when the word is spoken, when the salt is applied? What flavour comes out? Eh? Of that, when you get that nice piece of chicken and uh, just give it a bit of a rub. with a, a couple of dabs of um, uh, olive oil and just a smear of, um, of vegetable oil and, a, and another smear of um, peanut oil, just all these, just a smear, just a rub and then a sprinkle, just a little sprinkle of salt, sea salt. Oh, throw it on the grill. Boy, boy, hey? Eh? You know what flavour is going to come out of there? Is she going to be a cracker, hey? Eh? She's going to be a beauty. And uh, maybe a bit of cracked pepper as it hits the plate. You could even, instead of the peanut oil, if you've got an allergy or something, you could probably use a bit of sesame. And as you're just giving it a rub, you'd be, open sesame. You know? <laughs> Nothing wrong with the old sesame oil. It brings a nice flavour forth too. But you get that final touch and see it's all moist and, and you hit it with that sea salt. Oh. Well, that's just like a, a bona fide disciple, isn't it? They come along and you can't get rid of them sometimes. They're so joyed out. You don't know them from Jack. And they're hanging around like flies. <laughs> you can't shake them. Because <laughs> they're, they're joying up in the word. The flavour that's coming out of them is, is a grateful flavour. Like, um, just bear with me for a minute and I'll just zip over to uh, I'm going to zip a, to the scripture here. Yeah. Get me act together. I'm going to go over to the parable of the uh, the parable of the um, the sower. Hey. Parable of the Sower. In Matthew 13, verse 3, he spoke many things to them in parables, saying, Behold, a sower went out to sow, and as he sowed, some seed fell by the wayside, and the birds came and devoured them. Some birds came and devoured them. Some fell on the stony places where they did not have much earth and they immediately sprang up 
because they had no depth of earth. But when the sun when the sun was up they were scorched and because they had no root they withered away. Some fell among thorns and the thorns sprang up and choked them. But others fell on good ground and yielded a crop. Some a hundredfold, sixty, thirty. He who has ears to hear, let him hear, see? If you're willing to hear, if you're willing to hear, hear. Right? Come over here. Now, if you're willing to hear, and I've said that many a time to people, and they're walking by and they're sort of, as they're walking by, they keep looking back, you know, they're only walking to a wall or something. And I said, if you have an ear, come over here. You hearing me? <laughs> Obviously wasn't hearing me. And we see where it fell and what flavour was there. Right? And there's a lot of shallow people out there with no depth at all right? of character. And um, they're sort of like, you know, they're the scorched almonds of the place. When the sun was up, they were scorched almonds. They were scorched because they had no root. They withered away. Right? Then you got the thorns. And they sprang up and the thorns choked. Right? The Lord Jesus shows us we have to have that uh, good ground. Don't go blaming yourself. Don't go blaming yourself because people aren't getting the message. See, they play a part too. But the ones saved always say, oh, no, 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 no. The Spurgeonites, they're all there, blah, blah, blah. Oh, God's going to get you there. You don't have to do anything. You, you, you know, he's doing it all. He's going to blah, 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 blah. Hey? But what do you see here? We see the wayside, we see the stony, we see the thorny, and we see the, the good ground. These are all people. So we're playing a part in this. Jesus isn't saving himself. <laughs> He's saving us. And us are in there. Right? As Joshua said, you choose. He didn't say God's going to choose for you. You choose whom you shall serve. Who do you want to serve? What flavour are you when the word is presented? Do you, oh, there's the preacher over there, I can't have a listen. Gee, I tell you what, that's beautiful, isn't it? you got someone lining up there. And I've had them too. They, they stand there and get an earful. And when I was in Spain, in Madrid, I talking to the chappy there, he was painting a mural. Decent sized thing too. She was a cracker. Ten foot by ten foot easy. He had it all laid out. Big slab of canvas. Smack bang in the middle of Madrid. In the square there. And uh, right next to the, the subway. 
And there was, um, or oh, the underground, whatever it led down to. And then uh, he was painting away and I asked him what he was painting. He said, he was painting Jesus. I said, oh, do you know Jesus now? He said, you crazy or something? And I said, well, how can you paint him if you don't know him? <laughs> he got upset. I said, would you like to meet Jesus? Oh, look, please go away. I've got to make some money today. I'm trying to do this, you know. I went, please. And then, just over a dab, uh, with a bloke standing there, he, how he heard me, I don't know. Uh, I'd like to know Jesus. <laughs> I'd like to meet Jesus. He is from Afghanistan. He's a bootmaker. And uh, so I went over to him, gave the word to him. And you see the different flavours? You got the one there that's doing the mural trying to make a quid. He didn't want to know about it. He just wanted to knock up some religious view of Jesus, sell it. He knew better than Judas, really. Eh? He was using hypothetically Jesus for gain. It's all he meant to him. Because he's, well, I mean, a religious city like Madrid. they got cathedrals that you can't see the tops of. And the architecture is mind-boggling. And people are standing in awe of that. See? They think that's it, you know, that's the bee's knees. But until you meet Jesus, you ain't seen nothing yet, I tell you. And so uh, the Afghanistan, Afghan uh, bootmaker, um, Mr. Fuzzard was his name. <laughs> He even took me home, made me a cup of tea. They're not too flash on the tea. Make them tea. A bit like the Africans when they make tea. Dear me. You know, I'm used to the old Aussie brew. But, uh, yeah, he he received the Lord. He was he, he just looking at me with the, with the... He was amazed. He's no longer in the, in a maze. He was amazed at, at what was coming out of my mouth. I couldn't get out of the place. Hey? He had this uh, gigantic dog. I think he was taller than me. Not that that's very tall, but... And... Uh, this big wolfhound, man, life. She was a giant. She stunk too. This long hair, grey. It was a grey thing. Just the presentation of it would scare you away from the place. But a beautiful flavour came out. You know, when the salt was presented, gave him a sprinkle. And, oh, wow, the gratitude, the, the the kindness. He wanted to buy me a drink, you know. He wanted to get me a drink, wanted to take me home, you know. And uh, talk and fellowship. And that's what we want, isn't it? We're, we're looking for the lost sheep of Israel. We're looking for those that belong to the Lord. And who might they be? They're my brother, they're my sister, and they're my mother who hear the word of God and do it. See? See, what comes out of us can either be used for for Jesus' glory or... Uh, 
it can be an indication of what needs to be dealt with with that person. Right? We just go over to Isaiah. Isaiah. 55, and the verse is 11. So shall my salt be that is sprinkled. Now, so shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. It shall not return to me void, but it shall bring forth a flavour. From the hearer. No, but it shall accomplish what I please. It shall prosper in the thing which it is sprinkled on. It is it will prosper in the thing which I sent it. It shall prosper in the thing for which I sent it. What do you think of that? Huh? How wonderful is that? Never. Never, never, never. Well, the world says never say never. I'm gonna. <laughs> I'm gonna. Right? I'm gonna say it will never return void. Why? Because it says it here. So shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. It shall not return to me void, but it shall accomplish what I please. It will not return void. It can never return void because God said so. So, dear listeners, if you are one that goes out to reach out, hey, you're the one that goes out to reach out to the people and take the word out, whether you're speaking the word or distributing the word, it's not going to return for him. Hey? Once, look, when you sprinkle salt on someone, it's not going to return for him. You're going to see something, you're going to hear something. I used to hear a lot in the mail. Back in the snail mail days, I used to get a lot of very uh, bad, very bad flavours coming in the mail. You're this, you're that, blah, 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 blah. Don't judge. Don't judge. That's like saying don't love. If judging was a bad thing, you, why would God have magistrates? <laughs> why did He establish governing authorities? I know that that. Look, we know the governing authorities today are crooked as the dog's hind leg, most of the time, if not nearly all the time. But that's not the point. The point is God has established all authority. See? The magistrates are there. I oh, don't judge. Imagine walking into a courthouse and saying to the judge, don't judge. Oh, how ridiculous. The judge is trying to get to the bottom of it. Who's who in the zoo? Hey? And that's what the word does, doesn't it? The word gets to the bottom of who's who in the zoo. Hopefully the person will go away and say, man, when that man said that, when that woman said that, and they're on their own and they really say, well, that really cut my heart, that, that was the truth. I might have to attend to that, you know, secretly. Like a bit of a Nicodemus, you know, came by night. He's sneaking round in the dark there. Because he was supposed to be the man of the moment, teacher of Israel. But he didn't have the goods. Hey? Jesus had to tell him. Nicodemus.
Nicodemus was the shining man of the moment there in Israel. But here's Jesus, oh, that poor Jesus, you know, who's he? But he's the one, Jesus, they're telling him, giving him the good oil. So, uh, it's a double-edged sword, isn't it? What comes out can be can be either used for the glory of the Lord. It'll glorify God. Someone is loving or sweet or submissive, or and someone is um, e- e- even those who are bitter and hateful and all that. That all proves that Jesus is the truth because He tells us all this. He tells us that we're going to go out there and we're, we're sent out as sheep among wolves. What do you think of that? And he tells us that we're, we're uh, going to be um, attacked. And w- w- when you're wrongly accused for doing the right thing, there's those sort of people out there. Okay? Right? All those people are out there. The living word, um, as I initially said, uh, that we are the salt and the light of the world because of him. We're not the salt. You look at the world and the people in the world, they're not the salt and the light. And we were of the world, one part of it there, but now we're of the Lord. Right? We were um, people who had all kinds of issues. Right? We read that Paul of the Corinthians and drunkards and uh, immoral and goes on and on and on, doesn't it? Paul was writing there uh, to the Corinthians. Right? And um, what did he say? (laughs) What did he say there? I'll go over here to uh, one Corinthians six nine. Do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived. Neither fornicator, adulterer, adulterers, homosexual, sodomites, thieves, covetous, drunks. Revelers, extortioners will not inherit the kingdom of God. And such were some of you. But you've been washed, you've been sanctified, and you've been justified. In the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit. Oh, hallelujah. Such were some of you, see. But the Lord, he sprinkled some salt on us. Oh, hallelujah. And now we've flavoured up. And as we like to partake in a nice piece of meat, a nice T-bone, a lot of flavour in the T-bone, Nice piece of salted um, rump or um, scotch fillet or the barra or whiting or maybe a nice uh, sprinkle a bit of salt on a uh, drumstick or a chicken wing, hey, grilled. 
yes, we might partake of that and really enjoy it. So the people should really enjoy your company because of the salt, not because of us, because of the salt. They're tasting the salt. Eh? Oh, hallelujah. What about old Naaman? He was a commander of an army. He was a somebody in the world. And he... Uh, and he... Um, was a leper. And when he was told, given the word, see, the servant of the prophet went down to him and said, and he was, the pride rose up, you know. See what the word of the Lord. And the servant went down with a bit of salt, so to speak, and he, oh, he rose up. Why, why do I have to go down and wash in the... Uh, Jordan, why can't I go to the, the, the far far or far far or whatever it is? Why can't I go to a beautiful river? Why do I go down that dirty old Jordan? See the prides. You just sprinkle that word on someone, sprinkle the salt. And go out there and I tell you, you're going to see something. Or you're going to hear something. Gonna hear out. No. Gonna hear hallelujah. <laughs> yeah. Praise the Lord. Preach it. Right? I'll name him. And then of course you look at all the others there. You, you got um who else we got there? All through the scriptures. Different individuals were spoken to the rich young man. Hey? Rich young man. He told him to give all his money to the poor. He was silent. They didn't read any reply there, did we? Hey? And the same with the young man who had to bury his dad. He wanted to go to the funeral first and then come and follow Jesus. Jesus said, no. Nah. You don't put me in second place, mate. You don't put Jesus in second place. Or put him on hold. What sort of person would put Jesus on simmer? Come on now. Hey? Putting Jesus on hold. Oh, dear. Man, alive. You just can't do it. We can't do that. What about Matthew 10? Unless you love me more. Unless you love me more. Look, if you don't love Jesus more, then your mother and sister and brothers, and blah, 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 Roman, uh, I should say, Matthew 10, 34 to 39, how can you be his? That's the bottom line. That's the test, isn't it? How can you be his? you got people that have come to the Lord, they've been born again, they've been water baptised, they're filled with the Spirit, they're reading the Bible, and they're going on like a Bondi tram, you know, and they get down the road there, 10 years later, 15 years later, and everything's dead. It's all over, Red Rover. It, it's, a, you know, it's a Sardisian scene. It's the Church of Sardis revisited. You have a name that you were alive, but now you're dead. There's nothing happening. Huh? The garments are soiled. The mind is dimmed. The zeal is gone. <laughs> and so is the salvation. I don't believe that, many would say. I don't believe you can lose your salvation. And the reality is you forfeit it because Hebrews, Paul speaking to the Hebrews, Paul is a very reliable source of uh, teaching. Hebrews 3, 12 to 15. 
beware, beware, beware. He sort of like, nah, 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 ambulance coming. Beware, brethren, lest there be in you, lest there rise up in you an evil heart of unbelief through sin. And you, you depart from God, not God depart from you. You depart from the living God. What do you think of that? What flavour are you? Are you the sweetie pie? Are you the angry person, the proud? You might be a liar. You might be loving, patient. You might be humble. You might be grateful. You might be submissive. You might be bitter. You might be hateful. It might be kind. You know? What flavour are you? We are the salt of the earth. If the salt loses its flavour, how shall it be seasoned? It is then good for nothing but to be thrown out. See? Thrown out. There's John 15, 1 to 6. Thrown out and trampled underfoot by men. I'm going to give you all the glory, Jesus, because you're beautiful, you're wonderful, you're my everything, and everything is you. Bless the listeners today, Lord, those who would humble themselves and listen to this message today. Bless them in your way, in your time. Thank you, Jesus, for that. Everybody said, Amen.